The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. Well, howdy everybody. Welcome to the show where this week Deer and Wildlife Stories is in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania at an Amish deer farm. Now this Amish deer farm, they've been growing some of the biggest deer in the industry for 26 years now, but two years ago they changed. They changed their breeding strategy and you're not gonna believe what happened. White-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal. And white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and inform you of how deer farmers all over the country are now using rapidly developing science-based research on their captive deer herds to solve the chronic wasting disease issue through selective breeding. Not only is this new science working, but it's obvious that captive deer breeding is the only way to help save America's deer herds from CWD, which will help improve overall herd health and at the same time can produce more quality trophy sized animals for the general public. Join me as we discover how whitetail genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the modern day deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. So Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is about an hour out of Philadelphia, and uh, this is one of the most beautiful areas in the whole Keystone State. When you take a look at it, it's really green this time of year, and a lot of agricultural crops, a lot of big trees. The farms are beautiful. The reason why is most of them are Amish farms, and the Amish people are meticulous about everything they do. And this particular farm is Rocky Ridge Whitetails. Rocky Ridge Whitetails for 26 years has been growing some of the biggest whitetail deer on earth. And when you take a look around this place, everything, like I said, is meticulous. Every single thing is in perfect order. And that's one cool thing about deer farms is that deer farms, you don't have to have a lot of expensive equipment. You don't have to have a lot of combines and tractors and all. Amish don't have that. And deer farming is something the whole family's involved in. I don't care uh, if you're Amish or not. Of course, Amish people, they will outwork the non-Amish people 10 to one, guaranteed, all the time. Deer farming is perfect for the Amish people. They live out in the country, they live with their family, they're working outside, they, they do things that are good physically and mentally and spiritually. And take a look at this place. The pens are in perfect condition and the deer are out of this world. Now let's take a look at the awards. So you've got deer shows like North American Deer Farmers Association or TDA or PDFA, which is the Pennsylvania Deer Farmers Association. There are these shows all over the country and no matter which show you go to, you're gonna find deer farmers there that have deer that came from here or the genetics came from here, from Rocky Ridge Whitetails. They want the genetics and it's easy to see why. Just take a real quick look at these deer. I cannot tell you how many awards John Irvin Stolfus has won from Rocky Ridge Whitetails at these deer breeding events. I mean, you don't have enough fingers and toes to count them. They are on display. And then when you walk in his office and you see these bucks and you get real close to them, you're not looking at them out in the pens, you're looking at the mounts. These are replicas of these deer. You can see why people all over the country are wanting the genetics from Rocky Ridge Whitetails. So when you start taking a look at some of these gigantic deer, uh, a lot of people immediately think, oh, it's drugs. You know, that people are using drugs to get these deer this big, and that could not be any further from the truth. What they're using is genetics. In the deer industry, we have a registry. It's called the North American Deer Registry. They've been a sponsor of our show since we started. And what that is, is an official registry of animals nationwide that allows us to be able to look at the genetic ancestry of these animals. It's just like they have in the horse industry and the cattle industry and, and the AKC Kennel Club. I mean, we're able to track the genetics of these animals. We know the dam and the sire, the mom and the daddy to every single deer going back generations and generations and sometimes eight and 10 generations, seriously. So what we've done is we've been able to selectively breed the best to the best to the best. And that's what they've done here at Rocky Ridge Whitetails. 
Well, recently, the last couple of three years, Dr. Christopher Seabury came up with a way to be able to determine the genetic breeding value. And what that was is a way to scientifically look at these animals and determine which animals are more and less susceptible to chronic wasting disease. But there's leaders in our industry, and the owner of this deer farm at Rocky Ridge Whitetails is a leader. And the reason why is because a couple of years ago, he changed his breeding strategy completely. Not just took the biggest to the biggest to the biggest to the biggest and kept putting them together. John Irvin Stolfus started taking the animals that were less susceptible to chronic wasting disease and putting them on other animals that were less susceptible to chronic wasting disease and building a hardier, more resistant animal to chronic wasting disease. And so now what we have is we have a future that is bright because not only do we have the biggest and the healthiest deer in the world, but literally we have animals that are now more resistant to chronic wasting disease than ever before. If you'd like more information on Rocky Ridge Whitetails, you can call John Irvin Stolfus at the phone number on the screen right now, or look him up online at rockyridgewhitetails.com. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. If you just joined us, we're in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania at Rocky Ridge Whitetails, where they changed up the breeding strategy and now they're making their deer more chronic wasting disease resistant than ever before. Right now, it is the second week of August and the deer, as you can tell, they're absolutely beautiful and they got about another two weeks of growing to go. But uh, when you come and spend time with uh, John Irvin Stolfus, he's gonna wanna take you to eat at a very special place. <laughs> So let me tell you about Josh Newton. Josh Newton helps everybody in the deer farming industry. He is a brilliant man when it comes to animal nutrition. He's also a current president of the PDFA, the Pennsylvania Deer Farmers Association. He's an extremely knowledgeable individual. Josh is a friend of John Irvin Stolfus, and John is a Amishman. And so I asked Josh, I said, would you come on board and uh, help me explain what's going on at Rocky Ridge Whitetails, and more specifically about the importance of the genetic selection when it comes to breeding chronic wasting disease out of the whitetail deer. I'm Josh Newton. I'm the CEO of Servant Solutions, a health management platform catering specifically to the servant industry. I'm also the president of the Pennsylvania Deer Farmers Association. I think I met John almost 20 years ago now, and John has a stellar reputation for raising some of the most high quality animals, not only in Pennsylvania, but across the nation. And he's an all around really, really great friend to have in the deer industry. You can see it all around you when you tour his operation. He has just a meticulous nature of going through and making sure that every detail is the best it possibly can be. And that shows in the end result or the end production animal that he raises. When you look at the genetics of John's herd, it's very obvious that he has taken great steps and lengths to incorporate genetics from all over the country. He assesses the quality of the animal. He brings in animals from the South, maybe from Texas. He has Pennsylvania genetics. He has Midwest genetics. He's simply selected for the best whitetails that he possibly can, and he's used its own strategy to create his own deer. So I think when you look at the in-depth genetic work that John's already done, and you couple that with the new information regarding chronic wasting disease markers and genomic estimated breeding values, John is setting himself up to have some of the best deer in the industry nationwide. So there's one question I get asked all the time is, what is the advantage of having partnerships? And John's a classic example of a guy that really relishes in the creation of those partnerships. Number one, it's to de-risk the potentially regulatory impact of chronic wasting disease. And number two, it's the ability to diversify your genetics with shared common vision from your partners. When Deer and Wildlife Stories returns, we're gonna show you some incredible bucks. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, LE Fence, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, 
UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and by New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. When you look at the sheer number of great bucks here at Rocky Ridge, it's hard to pick out a breeding program. Most of these deer would be breeders at anybody's farm, but through John's breeding program, he selected a few that are absolutely exceptional. Let's take a look at Cruiser. Cruiser is a seven-year-old. He has a codon 96 value of GS, and his GBV is excellent with a negative 0.22 value. As far as his production goes, it's really legendary at this point. Being seven years old, he has lots of sons and daughters around the country, and everywhere I go, I'm seeing exceptional cruiser offspring. And then there's Navigator. With his giant frame, this four-year-old is exceptional, and he's an SS markered buck with a negative breeding value. Let's take a look at the exceptional cruiser son, Milo. Milo is a Codon 96 SS with a negative 0.2 value GBV. Look at this buck, isn't he beautiful? Check out Missile. Navigator Sun out of a Cruiser Doe going back into Jumbo. He's in Podon 96 SS with a great negative 0.18 breeding value. Check out this tremendous yearling Supersonic. Listen to this pedigree. He is Cruiser over Navigator's womb sister. He's a Codon 96 SS, and he's a minus 0.24 GEBV, wow. There are so many more great bucks here at Rocky Ridge, we just can't show you all of them. But check out this montage and stay till the end. We're looking at these bucks around Rocky Ridge. We're gonna have information on the screen and it's really important to pay attention because we're gonna have a lot of information coming at you. Let's talk about the uh, genetic lines that he has here. You know, John has for a long time really focused probably the most out of anything next to herd health on his genetics. There's two kind of primary lines that I, I like to talk about. One is Jumbo, so he was a world record I think he's still the world record for a yearling. Absolutely tremendous deer. Really put a nice finishing touch on Rocky Ridge whitetails as far as being an elite breeder. On the doe side, which we know is just as important, is Heather. And she has established herself to be one of the, if not the top mainframe producing does in the country, let alone on John's farm. And what any good breeder does is they look at the production of these animals or the offspring and then they make certain distinct selective choices. And over and over again, Jumbo and Heather keep coming together in this mix. On a scale of one to 10, okay, with 10 being the most important and one being the least important, where would you rate the GEBV scoring method in decision-making when it comes to genetics for breeding deer? I think in today's world, especially here in Pennsylvania, it's the number one component in a breeding program. It's going to be the most important thing moving forward for breeders in the state of Pennsylvania. And you may be wondering what GEBV is. It's Genetic Estimated Breeding Value. And it's done scientifically. It's been done on, the, on, on cattle and sheep. It's been done on other species. Now it's just being done on the white-tailed deer, thanks to the research by Dr. Christopher Seabury and the North American Deer Registry. So as you're looking at the graphics that are on the screen and you see SS, that's really what you want to go for. But there's two characteristics that what we're trying to breed for and explain to them, not just the codon, which would be GG, GS, or SS, explain to them the breeding value. So the breeding value is represented in a number. And the number goes on a scale, let's say zero's in the middle, negative numbers are on the left-hand side, positive numbers on the right. You want to breed towards those negative numbers but you also want to pair that negative GBV value with the codon markers. And the codon is simply the prion gene 
that is in the white-tailed deer, and that happens to be codon 96. And so what happens is what you're looking for ultimately is an SS. That's what research has proven. You're looking for an SS. So what do you do if you have a GG? One of these deer out here may have a GG, and he's a fantastic deer. It goes back to the heather line. But it doesn't get any better than that. Okay, what do you do to, to still be able to use that deer? Simple. Take him and put him with an SS. So you have a GG and an SS, and the offspring is going to be a GS. Okay, and that's what you're looking for. And you're looking for that offspring to have a lower breeding value than the dam and the sire for sure. So just take a look at some of these bucks. I mean, whether you're looking at the yearlings, and again, they've got breeding values that are off the charts. I mean, in today's market, if you're not breeding towards the breeding value, I think you're not even gonna be in the game down the road. What do you think? I think that's spot on. And I like to say that like, if you look at our market, we've established a really good quality health in our animals. We've established the ability to grow large bodies. We have survivability. We have good antler traits. We're just adding another trait that is GBV or this low susceptibility to chronic wasting disease. So you hear us talk about GGs, GSs, and SSs, but there are other codons as well that are important to the deer industry. Explain to the H's. So 95H is another codon that is encapsulated within that prion gene or that prion space. And it's starting to warrant and merit some consideration as it continues to move up in its genomic analysis or protective layer that it can provide. And this information is extremely important when it comes to planning your breeding program. Us deer breeders, the guys that are serious about it, we're not just breeding for today, okay, and matching a dam and sire and say, okay, this is what we want. And so we're breeding for years down the road. I mean, it's not just for this coming season. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and you know, John Irvin has always been at the forefront of looking at these genetics. And he's taken a stance where he's incorporating a small percentage of his uh, breeding options to that, that HS marker. I want to point something out. Most people would look at it and say, he's been doing this 26 years. He's won more awards and we have fingers and toes between us. True. I mean, he's won all these awards. Why would he do this? Because it's the right thing to do. It's where the industry is going. It is, and John has a, a really uncanny ability to look into the future and say, this is where the market is, and I want to be able to be here and participate in that market and not have to worry about CWD, and these are steps to make that happen. Again, I know we're giving you a lot of information. If you're watching on TV and you want to see this over again, go to the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube and you watch it 24 seven and get a pencil and paper and write down this stuff. And uh, if you want more information, get a hold of John Irvin Stolfus, okay? You can get a hold of us and we would love to try to explain this to you. And it's something that it is hard to, to wrap your mind around, but once you wrap your mind around it, you'll realize that somebody's been doing this for a quarter of a century. He changed his entire perspective on breeding because of the science here. And so it's really, really important. Head over to the Deer Farming Channel. You can watch us over and over again. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, CC Bar Whitetails, and the North American Deer Farmers Association. Now some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. Hey guys, it's Ron with LE Fence here. Right now we're getting ready to pound some pipe into the ground, start building our braces. This first pipe right here is gonna be one of our gate hinge posts. So we're gonna drive this pipe extra deep. Uh, we're gonna go probably six feet in the ground just about. Uh, all we're doing is using a hydraulic king hitter attached to the back of a three-point on our tractor. Uh, so right now he just leveled to make sure he's hitting it square. And all he's going to do is just gradually hammer this pipe into the ground until we hit resistance. So here in a minute it's going to keep going down pretty quick and then it's going to hit the ground and just start going real slow. That's when we hit resistance and know when we have solid ground that the pipe's into. What are your thoughts on what the future looks like now that we have the genetic breeding values to be able to work our breeding programs with? I think the future is bright. I am more optimistic about the deer industry uh, privately and publicly than I've ever been before. The work that we do in our, our private deer farms has consequences outside of the fence. And I mean those consequences in a good way. 
If you look at the turn of the 19th century, there was literally no deer in this country. We killed a lot of them. And it was because of those early pioneers restocking certain populations of genetics that we have 34 to 35 million whitetails in North America today. I feel like we're on the cusp of being able to provide that genetic material to potentially restock areas that have been kind of ravaged by CWD or need some new genetics in there. So I'm incredibly optimistic on that. And that's the reason why so many people from all over the country deal with John, because he's got such a variety of different genetics. If you come out here, and it's really easy to get here. It's in Lancaster County. We flew into Philadelphia and it's an hour drive. And uh, take a look at the farm. It's absolutely, it's, it's perfect. It's like, it is perfect. It's a show place. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, everything is perfect. Every fence post is perfect. The grass is manicured and the deer are out of this world. And that, that speaks to John as a person. The amount of quality and time that he puts in to not only the, just the outside looks of his operation, that same attention to detail that we, you and I see and frankly we, we really like, that goes into his deer as well. And that goes into his customer service. When you're dealing with John Irvin Stolfus, Rocky Ridge Whitetails, you're not just dealing with somebody that's going to sell you the deer. You're going to deal with somebody that you want to deal with over and over again. That's the reason why he's been doing it for over a quarter of a century. And the reason why he changed is like, whoa, this new breeding program he's got is going to skyrocket him even further. Agreed. Hey, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. And y'all, thanks for joining us. If uh, you want more information on Rocky Ridge Whitetails, you can contact John Irvin Stolfus at the phone number that you see on the screen right now, or you can contact him on his website. He'd love to hear from you. I'm Keith Warren. Appreciate you watching. And hey, Check out the Deer Farming Channel where you can replay this show over and over again because there's a lot of information in it. You're going to find a lot of other shows there too. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.